Not sure if you all know this, but Adrian and I both have YouTube channels. My YouTube channel, if you can please subscribe, is Nevermore Records. Adrian's is Plastic Realm Toys. You can also follow us on Instagram at HNH underscore podcast and find us on Facebook. We even have a private group. Just send a request and we'll let you in. Follow our recording studio on Instagram at Nevermore underscore records underscore EPTX and our guitar company on Instagram at Nevermore underscore guitars. But then mid to late nineties, it came back. It was new metal, corn, Lim biscuit, Lim biscuit. Oh, okay. that was terrible, though. That makes but, me want to uh, vomit in my uh, mouth. Hold on, hold on. Okay, but again, you should have fed, yeah. it, fed it to me like a little baby. Bird. But that's what I'm saying, though. But again. And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Half and Half Podcast. Hey, 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 girlfriend. This is Paul. This is Adrian. <laughs> gotta get. We gotta get into the sixty-seven episodes, and we. <laughs> I think we've done it once. Probably. Yeah. How's it going? Ah, oh, dude, it's been a bitch of a two weeks. Has it? It's been more than two weeks this time. No, but I'm saying these past two weeks for me. Yeah, but it's all been. Oh shit. It's all been connected to, I mean, I think it started before you even tested, no? What? The symptoms. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The HIV. So, <laughs> finally caught up with me. <laughs> all those guys, man. I fucking knew it. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about that. Yeah. Adrian fucking, finally got it. I finally got fucking COVID. Two years. Finally. Too late. Three years. Oh, yeah. I mean, like three and a half years. Two years where, fact. like, there was no symp- sympathy for you. Oh, I, I, well, let me tell you right now, there still fucking wasn't. Even though I got COVID, what I do was, you mean? I was on a lonely island by myself. That's what I'm dude. saying. <laughs> like, so for our listeners, Adrian got COVID, and I told him, I said, you know, two years ago it would have been every ten minutes, like, are you okay? Oh, What's going what on? Yeah. How are you feeling? But when he finally got it, it was like, oh, you got a cold? <laughs> I fucking wish. <laughs> every, so talk about it. Everyone's saying it, it's a cold. It, it runs runs its course quick, in and out, blah, blah, blah. You might continue to test positive, but you're going to be good. Fuck no. So sat Sunday at work, I started feeling like utter shit, man. Mm-hmm. Worst part about it is you're at work. You know mm-hmm. when you start feeling sick at work, it's like it, almost like it amplifies your symptoms. So I thought, oh, when I get home, I'll lay down, take some NyQuil, and I'll be good. Nothing, dude. Nothing took the fucking pain away. Monday, I was like, all right, for shit sure, I got the flu. Like, Because I heard the flu's going around, mm-hmm. right? So I said, all right, I got that nasty flu going around, but I'll be done with it by Tuesday. Nope. Fucking Tuesday rolls around. And I was like, the thing that threw me off was nothing that I took. Ibuprofen, Advil, NyQuil, Theraflu, literally nothing broke the pain. So it was just physical pain. Yeah. Body aches beyond fucking belief. Yeah. Headache beyond fucking belief. Right. So normally, I mean, medicine will help you a little bit, even take the edge off. It did nothing. Not like I took nothing. So Tuesday I said, yeah, well, I was going to go to the doctor on Monday, but I couldn't get myself to drive. That's how bad I felt. Right. I said, there's even the, the clinic's five minutes from my house. I said, even five minutes sounds like a fucking hour. Right. Tuesday, I mustered up a little bit of strength and I went to the doctor. And the doctor was like, yep, you got COVID. <laughs> so I, was, I started freaking out because I'm like, fuck, I went three and a half years. Yeah. And he told me, he was like, well, it's no longer a matter of if, it's when mm-hmm. this day and age, right, with the way COVID works. Um, so then he fucking tells me, yeah, there's COVID medicine, the Plavaxid or whatever, the one that everybody gets. Yeah, the one that I took. Yeah. Uh, Plox, uh, Pav... Pavlov, whatever. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. My sister took it. Everyone that I know took it, and they were like, dude, first pill, I felt like a million dollars, right? So in my mind, I'm like, all right, I've got it. He's going to give me this medicine. I should be good by tomorrow. Paxlovid. Yeah. He looks at me and goes, yeah, but I'm not going to give it to you. And I was like, why? And he's like, well, you're healthy. You're young. The side effects aren't aren't worth it. And I was like, so I'm supposed to fucking... So that concerns me right there. <laughs> What are the side effects that are so bad that he's not willing to prescribe that? I took that shit. 
Yeah. I ended up getting COVID like two days again after I was done taking it. Yeah, you had that that uh the rebound. Yeah, the rebound. That's scary. Yeah, that's fucking scary, man. Yeah, he was like, "You, COVID's not going to put you in the hospital. COVID's not going to do anything to you. Just let it run its course." And I was like, "But I looked at him and I, I wanted to cry. I'm like, dude, but the pain won't go away. Yeah, like, Tuesday, no Monday, whatever yeah. fucking day it was." Even my T-shirt touching touching my body would fucking hurt. I would get cold, and I put my blanket on, and my skin would fucking hurt. So that's counter to like Joe Rogan's whole argument, which I buy into his argument. Right? What um, are we talking about? What about we? if you're healthy, uh-huh. if you're fit, that COVID is like just a blink of an eye. And but, dude, like you're the most fit person I know. And I feel like you got it worse than a lot of people I know. That's what I'm saying. So how does that even work? I don't know. It's like... uh, I I mean, I could tell you stress plays a big um, role on your immune system. True. And I I know you like to say I'm a little bitch with stress. Yeah, a little pussy. I don't think I didn't hear your fucking podcast (laughs) without me. (laughs) Always when I'm not around. (laughs) But when I'm around, are you okay? (laughs) Are you fine? (laughs) Anyway... um, so I don't know. Maybe my immune system was just fucking very low. I have been stressed lately. And, True. You know, a lot of shit. I went through two months of shift at the plant and like my sleep has been fucking horrible. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know. But it got me. The fucker got me. And it took a week, literally from Sunday when I felt sick to the following Sunday. Yeah. I was feeling like Well, shit. see, here's the other thing. Uh, another one of my podcasters got it and he's also very fit gym all the time everything and it took him out of commission for a long time too who's the same thing vic oh vic got yeah it. really yeah and that was literally like i think two weeks before you oh he just recently yeah had it. yeah mm. so i don't know and then there's there's people that are not so fit that we know that just breeze through it so i don't know yeah it's fucking weird but it took me the fuck out dude even a severe flu I'm done within a day, mm-hmm. like fucking in and out, boom, out. This nothing, dude. But the good thing was, though, is that the the thing that that's bad about COVID, right, is the lung issues. You had no lung issues. I mean, you're coughing still, yeah, but it's a tickle right here. Yeah, like, it's not. Well, I usually am able to give you that tickle too. That's what I'm saying. But that's <laughs> that's a good one, though. It's a good tickle. <laughs> this one, I just it's just something right here when I when I breathe or take a deep breath. Yeah, it just makes me go. <clears throat> It's not yeah, like, like a coffee. Well, that's fit. definitely respiratory for sure. But I, I don't feel anything here. Yeah, I have yeah. No phlegm, nothing. Excuse me. Wow. So I don't know this this fucking thing, man. Even even before I I caught it, I was like, man, God forbid I do. But they say it's like a cold, so I'm not worried about it. Right. Fuck no. I now do I'm not, worried about it. I do not want to go through this again. Because when I got it, it was bad. But I feel like it's gonna be bad again if I get it. So, anyways, well, I'm glad you're better. Thank you. Um, and it took me over a week to test negative. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. I had to cancel our podcast on Sunday. Two podcasts. I was invited to be on Exiled. Shout out Three to Three podcasts. Dave and our podcast, we were going to do half and half. On Sunday? No, we had another one that was going to be scheduled. We were talking about doing it weekly. Monday. Yeah. When I officially half and got half, sick. Exiled and the Dad podcast. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Well, what else is new? I know you've been pretty much just in bed. <laughs> Dude, t- that's what I'm saying. Two weeks of my, like today is fucking stacked, right? Because I was sick for a week. And then even more so like when I started feeling better around Thursday, right? Like I couldn't, the pain was going away. I could walk around. I, you know, I wasn't feeling like completely bogged down. You can't be around anybody because you don't want to infect anybody. Right. So I literally lost a whole week, Sunday through Sunday. Then I had to go to work Monday on my 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 uh, hell week, mm-hmm. so that's forty eight hours dedicated. Like I fucking lost a lot of time. You know what I mean? At work, hell At, week yeah. with the hell of virus. Yeah, with the hell of virus. <laughs> <laughs> Inside joke, guys. Sorry, I <laughs> yeah. uh, don't want to get into that. Um, damn. Well, yeah. Again, I'm glad you're better. Well, thank you. And we're back at it. Yeah. Till I get it. Knock on wood. Damn it. Really, knock on wood. Um, anyways, <laughs> under the table. <laughs> Dude, I the, the shitty part about it for me, but I told you yesterday, fitness is my life, mm-hmm. right? Like I love fitness working. 
Oh God. <laughs> That's that's like the that's like the Rocky joke. I tell everybody, you guys are lucky. That's my favorite movie. Because if I had a cor- a fraction of a penny for every time I hear I heard Yo Adrian my whole life, <laughs> I'd be a fucking billionaire right now. <laughs> but anyway, this is the longest I've gone two weeks without working out. I have not worked out at all in two fucking weeks. The last time that happened was ten years ago when I ruptured my bicep. That's right. But I think you need it though. But I don't feel like it. Right. Like I, that week in bed has made me so lazy. Right. Like I just want to stay in bed. That's what I was telling you. Imagine going a few years without working out like I have, <laughs> how much you won't want to work out after that. Like normally the routine is I get home from work, help my wife with dinner. She needs me to help her with something. Watch TV for a little while, you know, shower or whatever. This past, this past week, Monday through Thursday, I get home and I'm like, I'm going to go lay down. Yeah. And I went straight to bed. Wow. <laughs> yeah. so sometimes you need it man okay. also also uh bearing in mind that doesn't working out consistently like you do all the time also take a toll on your immune system big time yeah so again that's like a double whammy for you yeah it is <clears throat> all right um a couple things i wanted to talk about i want i really wanted to get into the fact that right after our last episode i went to go see Caifanes. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to. I, I was there taking notes. Um, it was exciting at the time, and now that it's been two weeks, I'm like, eh, do I really want to talk about it? I don't know. Should I? Yeah, just br- breeze through it. All right, Gaifanas, because the reason why this is important is because I challenged you with them. Yeah. And you like them. Yeah. Um. So, just a couple of takeaways from that night. Um. You know, my wife got me into them. They are a Spanish rock band. My wife. Uh. You know, they're from Mexico. Um. They're from the 80s good band really really good band so right out the gate you know one of the things that i noticed that i thought was really weird man because so so for our listeners that are not here in el paso we are a border town so whenever there's big shows half the people are there are probably from across the border um which a band like that yeah of course um probably most of them were and the thing is is that i feel like people on the other side of the border Mm -hmm. are far more diehard than we are yeah they, the their love and their passion for music makes us look like a bunch of wusses. Yeah. Um, and so, like, one thing that I thought was really interesting is that, you know, I, I've had this argument many times with people about wearing a band T-shirt to the band show. Mm-hmm. And I'm always against that. Yeah. I always say, you shouldn't do that. I'm, I'm that guy. Yeah. Yeah. But, dude, everybody. I don't, I think I may have seen maybe four or five people wearing a different band shirt. Everybody had a Kaifana shirt on. I thought that was really interesting. The worst part is, though, is they had no merch table. What? Yeah, dude. So, like, there was just people outside selling shirts, and they weren't even, like, legit. So, I don't even know. But anyways, I just had to, like, point that out because I thought that that was really interesting and kind of cool because it was, like, everybody got the memo and everybody did it. I don't know. The T-shirt thing. The T-shirt thing. Well, you'd be surprised. I mean, when I went to Incubus a few weeks ago, yeah, there's a lot of people Really? It's because normally you see people, but like, eh, it's hit or miss, right? I got to tell you, though, man, the merch in- industry is fucking ridiculous. Dude. Oh, yeah. I Did you see, a, though, that the Live Nation just yeah. signed the thing? Yeah. So the, for what we're talking about is they used to take merch, part of merch sales away from bands that are touring, which is huge because when you're on the road, like... That's that's your livelihood. Yeah. If you don't sell t-shirts at night, you might not have enough gas to get to the next city. Yep. Uh, but... Live Nation announced that they're no longer going to take, you know, a cut, a cut, cut from the merch, which is amazing. Hopefully, t-shirt prices go down then, because fucking forty dollars for a t-shirt. Yeah, dude. Every time we go to a concert, um, the whole family gets something, except me, right? Because I've I've kind of lost my way on on the band t-shirt. Thing. I always do, but only because I feel like I have to support the artist. I don't because it's the, Cause I, you're fucking I, cheapskate. I like man t-shirts and I don't like those little. Again, it's to support the band. I get it. Well, I bought an Incubus t-shirt. Like the Chili Peppers, I didn't get. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at is every time we go to a concert, it's two hundred dollars right out the gate for yeah, merch. Right, right. You know, t-shirts yeah. or you know, somebody wants a hoodie or whatever. But you know, like I gotta say, like most bands nowadays do have quality stuff. You know, it's so weird though. Huh. I won't buy a forty dollar t shirt, but I have zero problems spending sixty bucks on three tall boys at a concert. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So uh one of the things that I thought was hilarious, dude, is the singer. Mm. You know the the guy on Kingpin, the the villain 
uh, the dude that... Mr. McCracken? No, 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 no. Wait, yeah. Wait, no. Hold on. I'm trying Didn't to get I my kingpin you? lingo back. Uh, yeah, the one that owns the bowling alley. No. Yeah, the one that owns the bowling alley. The rich guy. Oh, oh, you're t- oh the guy who's trying to chase him down. Yeah, because of his girlfriend. Dude, the singer looks like him. Really? Yeah, at least now he does. Like I was like the whole time I was just like all I kept thinking was like, dude, <laughs> he looks just like the guy from Kingpin. Uh, dude, the bass player. He so the the only original members was the singer and the keyboardist and oh, the really? drum and the drummer. There's also a bassist who was not original and then a guitar player who wasn't original. Hmm. Um, the bassist was amazing, dude. Um, he just didn't have the look way. <laughs> it's a fucking look way. He just, you could tell, he kind of stood out like a sore thumb. Like you could tell he wasn't originally in the band. I don't know. That was just my takeaway. But he was like, his skills, skill wise, pretty amazing. And then he was just on a fretless bass. Yeah. Like it was nobody's business. Um, but anyways, uh, just really wanted to touch on that. It was a really good show. I, I felt that I wish I was a little bit more versed in, in more of their songs. Cause dude, they played for, I want to say like two and a half hours. Holy shit. Yeah. And there was some songs, but dude, it also made me realize my favorite song from them is such a good, like a chills way. <laughs> chills. <laughs> when I heard that song, it's so good, which was really weird. Cause I thought they were going to play it at the very end of all their encores, but they actually played it the second song, which really? is like one of their most famous songs. Yeah. And I thought that was which kind one, of interesting. Which one is it? Not that I remember the name. Uh, I don't even remember the name either. I have to show it to you. But anyways, really good experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, after a while, I was kind of like, oh, okay, I'm tired of standing. My back hurts. Oh, God. <laughs> no. But, uh, but I mean, two and a half hours standing, like, I don't give a shit. Wow. It's, it's, it's tough to do, especially when you're like, I don't know this song. That, that I can see. <laughs> I mean, the, no, with Incubus, I stood the whole time. You're talking like, But you know most of the songs. No, but I'm talking about the whole concert from opener to Incubus. Really? You didn't sit in between? I was on the floor. We didn't have to. We had floor seats. Floor <laughs> general admission. No, oh, okay. no seats. Same I, thing. I thought you said you were in the stands. No. Uh, really? Yeah. Same thing with the Chili Peppers. The last time we saw them, we were on the floor. So that was like a good four hour stand. Yeah. Well, see, like, I mean, I've done that many times, but again, they're for bands that like I'm really excited to see. I was excited to see them, but it wasn't again. It's not like a band that i love yeah not, like yeah. one time i stood for fucking like i think it was probably close to six to eight hours but that was like because i saw deftones city and color metallica all back to back this is at the acl uh, yeah, yeah they were all on the same stage so just like back to back like that was pretty cool uh but again that was years ago or a few years ago and i'm just not getting any younger but anyways good show kind of wish you were there Holding my hand. Well, we're going to be, not that we can sit together, but we're going to be at Cigarettes After Sex. Oh, that's right. I a few weeks. about that. Yeah, a couple of weeks. Not this coming Wednesday, the following Wednesday. And for anybody that likes Cigarettes After Sex, I interviewed the keyboardist on my YouTube channel. Go to my YouTube channel, Nevermore Records. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube.com backslash Nevermore Records. Anyways. Um, and on the was, topic, yeah. Plastic Room Toys. <laughs> <laughs> Go check out my YouTube channel. <clears throat> So, um, anyways, that was something that I want to talk about. I actually was going to talk about the VMAs. Did you watch the VMAs this year? No, I have. Dude, we had this talk. Remember that you hadn't watched it in a long yeah, time. Yeah, I don't get excited. Like I'm not. So, like I always watch the VMAs. My mom, you know, my mom passed. Now it's been two years since she passed mm-hmm. away, but my mom was obsessed with TV shows like that, um, award shows. Yeah. And uh, I came home. I was here at the studio. I came home late. And my wife and my daughter were, were watching the VMAs. I was like, oh, I'll sit it down and watch it with you guys. It was like, I guess, the re-showing, the later showing. Yeah. Dude, it was it was pretty good, man. I got to tell you, though, something that y- you would appreciate. Um, it was like 95% hip-hop. But like, dude, let me tell you, fucking, they brought P. Diddy. <laughs> they brought like... All the old school 90s hip hop, all of those, even LL Cool J performed. Like, was this one song or was it just. No, dude, like throughout the whole fucking show. Really? It was pretty cool, man. Like, I gotta say, it was really cool. They really paid, uh, like, just like, is it homage? Like, 
to I to homage, all I mean. all the original Run DMC, the ones that were left over, were there. Really? Uh, like the old school dude, like the originators of hip hop. It was all the whole show was based oh, well, around that. Oh, that makes sense because this year was fifty years. Yes, of hip-hop. yes. So that's yeah. why. So it was. If you haven't seen it, I, I would highly recommend seeing it. I thought it was pretty badass. I wonder if I could find it on YouTube. One thing I can say, yeah, probably. One thing I could say though, man, is that we're back in that world. Speaking of the '90s, we're back in like that early '90s realm where it's like rock doesn't exist anymore on those shows. Oh yeah, and the bands that did, terrible. Yeah. I don't even know who they are. I know, I know, man. It's rock is in a really, really sad place, and it. I mean, it's been. I actually like it like this better though. I don't. It's the more underground. It's where shit really happens, dude. I once rock starts going mainstream, that's when you know rock dies, in my opinion. Uh, dude, well, once honestly, but dude, when's the last time this happened? Though it's been a long fucking time. What's happened? That rock has been dude, early nineties, I mean, dude. You know what revived rock? You no, know, what are you talking about? The nineties was the grunge era. The early nineties was but the dude, grunge era. But dude, it wasn't. But that I don't consider that rock. Uh, but, okay, at just the be, time, just I did it because you don't. You, you want to know what revived rock? Being on those shows and stuff is when Metallica came out with the Black Album, right? That was early nineties. Yes, I know. But what I'm saying is that that's when it like it just. It kind of died because of that. But then mid to late nineties, it came back. It was new metal, corn, Lim- Fucking biscuit, Lim- biscuit. Oh, okay. that was terrible, though. That makes but, me uh, want to vomit in my uh, mouth. Hold on, hold on. Okay. But again, you should have fed, yeah. fed it to me like a little baby. Bird. But that's what I'm saying, though. But again, just because you don't consider it. Here's it's, a, but what I'm saying is that those bands going mainstream like that gave birth to so much shitty rock. But so it, when it's not mainstream like that, it's giving birth to these really fucking great underground projects, in my opinion. Yeah, I can see that. I you mean, know what I mean? Yeah. Because after the Black Album, everybody, there was like a bunch of copiers. Even when it came to like Nirvana, a lot of shitty bands came out of that. Then Limp Bizkit, Corn, a lot of shitty bands came out of that. But a lot of great bands came out of it too. Alice in Chain, fuck Stone Temple Pilots, and then you got the Deftones, and you know what I mean? Like... Yeah, I don't know. I I just I like it this way, man. Okay. I like it. I like I I like the way it was. I guess you can say in the '80s when I was a kid and nobody was listening to rock, or at least it seemed that way, because it just it had more value to it because it was almost like secretive, but at the same time everybody was doing it. But for two musicians who are rock musicians, <laughs> who would want a piece of that pie? But I I don't know if I would. I don't know if I would, man. Oh. I would rather have a consistent, steady music career. Well, I'm not talking about ultra fame. I'm just talking oh, about... Oh, I thought that's what you meant. No. Oh. I just want to make money off of music. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I want to be able to maintain my lifestyle Which now. Which we know because we, we've spoken to people that you know we've gotten closer to that yeah. are in the industry who are up there and making money in, in this climate, music industry climate, just... It's not a thing. I mean, I got unless say, you're like fucking Metallica again. Uh, yeah, I mean, I got to say, I think not even just the fact that rock is—I'm not going to say dead, but it's not what it once was. I think the internet ruined a lot of shit, man. That came up yesterday. Uh, somebody asked me that. I don't remember who it was. Um, they said, "Do I feel that the internet was good or bad for bands?" I said, "Here's the thing." I said before the internet you were able to really stand out. Mm-hmm. Now, because of the internet, everything is so saturated that you are just a dime a dozen. Dude, I think I, had, I was having this conversation with my kid the other day. Yeah, though I'm, I'm still a CD collector, right? DJ Sh- DJ Shadow's n- new album is coming out. I already pre-ordered the CD and the tape, right? But even me, for somebody who's such a diehard on the actual physical copies spotify pandora all that shit ruined that for me right Mm -hmm. like pre music apps whatever you want to call them i would buy a cd order a cd fucking clear my car of any cds except that one right so i just had that week of that one fucking album my attention span is not there anymore yeah i'm constantly like "Eh, next yeah next next you know what i mean yeah um, for our listeners, a CD is a compact disc. It's a thing <laughs> that came out. <laughs> uh, on that um, note, real quick, 
um our old band now has our stuff speaking of streaming and being online yeah uh our band ashling Mm a-i-s-l-i-n-g we have uh a a lot of people have reached out over the years asking like where they can find our stuff and we literally only had it in like cd form and it was online stuff sporadically but a lot of those websites old school i went back you know what i found a couple days ago i found myspace still exists we still got like seven thousand followers on myspace but like the the actual website itself is like mostly inactive oh yeah it's so fucking weird i wish they would just like reboot it and like i don't know i my space was cool well, cool. at least for bands anyways for, for bands for bands that's how yeah. it started and yeah people ruined like it. The, yeah but anyways um ashling you can find our first full album we actually did an ep before this that we did back in oh, it's gonna make us sound so old but we did this we were kids we did this back in 2002 yeah when we were 10 hey man 10 year olds <laughs> dude our first full album is now available everywhere for streaming it is called estrella mm-hmm. e-s-t-r-e-l-l-a for the white people out there estrella estrella uh <laughs> check it out give us a listen that was like that was something that i still hold near and dear to my heart because that was when we were young and hungry and 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 we li- lived ate shit breathe music i mean still do it's just not as easy these days you know i heard um, you say that the other day and well, i'm curious as to why you think you can't sit down and write music or have time to do it because i don't i i feel like i don't i feel like there's always something else i need to be working on that's actually like making me money you know what i mean like, so I think to myself, for example, I have three projects right now that I'm mixing music for. I can go right now when we're done, I could go sit down for an hour and play the guitar and write something or I could work on their music. You know what I mean? So I always choose to work on their music. Yeah. So. Sad. I know. <laughs> I mean, I still teach college. I have papers to grade. Uh, our, you know, there's always something to do. There's always something to do. There's podcasts to edit. There's I just, I think... And I don't think I've, I've ever told you this before, but I'll put it out there now. Mm. I think sometimes you complicate the process, right? How? In like, you want you want you and I to sit down, write the song, then inv- and then we get it to a drummer, and then we do this instead of like, hey, the three of us have two hours on Tuesday. Let's fucking jam real quick. That's because I'm a ball hog, Adrian. Uh, <laughs> duh, <laughs> <laughs> duh. <laughs> you know I just I mean? honestly no no honestly like I do write really well with you with other musicians but sometimes I feel like I'm able to write I'm able to focus a little bit more when I'm by myself mm-hmm. or actually with you to be honest with you yeah. but you're I can't get you to fucking sit down for 45 minutes with me in the studio anymore that's your shit. You're always like, well, because I got this on Tuesday and then I got this Dude. one on Thursday. Because I tell you, I'm good Tuesday. Oh, I can't. I, I got a schedule too. I got a lot of podcasts. <laughs> when I have work. Thing is, I have a lot of, all my podcasts are usually on a tight schedule. So it's like, I got to get them in, get them out. Then I got my editing days and, you know, it's a lot. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, like I love writing with you. Love it. Especially when we're naked. That's the only way to do it. Glistening in the moonlight. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, go check out Ashling, A-I-S-L-I-N-G. Again, it's early stuff. Recording is cringy, but I was thinking about, I actually did a post about how, dude, we had, I had like no gear, man. I had, I didn't even have a computer when I recorded that. You had a BR-8. Yeah, an eight track digital recorder took these little floppy disks. Mm -hmm. I had the shittiest mics in the world. And And uh, an old school boom box for a speaker, right? Yeah, yeah, it was an Iowa, (laughs) Iowa, um, cd player with i was using the speakers yeah. <laughs> craziness man and you and know the, what the like tiniest fucking table that we would all have to huddle around <laughs> yeah like i cringe when i hear the recording but then i have to like give myself a little pat on the back when i realize what i had to yeah. make that recording yeah. and also the recordings after that that we're going to be releasing slowly yes yeah, they're so not the best in the world but by no means did i have anywhere near the best equipment i had the shittiest equipment that was around at the time but the funny thing the the funny thing about it is is how many albums and eps came out of that all your that little studio yeah, yeah you know what i mean and and just for just for people to know i can say it right what the 
full plan. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. So we're not just releasing this stuff just because. There's plans to reunite the band. Oh, I didn't know you were going to say that, but... Oh. <laughs> who cares? I don't give a shit. I mean, yeah, that is in the plan. I well, thought you were going to talk about the studio moving. I don't know why I thought you said that. Oh, no. So oh, I take it back. We're going <laughs> to erase that part. <laughs> just cut it out. No, that's all right. We, who gives a shit? Like, what? Are, we're not like fucking rolling stones trying to make or i mean they probably they're still around right we're not like this big band trying to make a fucking comeback so i don't give a fuck like the whole secretive shit is just bullshit what we're trying to do is we're we love music we love ashing all the original members minus one or two are we're still here um it's a project that we have always just had near and dear to our hearts and we're trying to uh, we've we've connected uh, you know again with our singer and uh our one of our guitar players and of course it's you and i and we're we have a drummer on deck and yeah so we're trying to bring up the discography in the meantime we're working on new material yeah and that's what i was trying to get to so if you go to spotify and listen to our our album misterea it doesn't stop there we're going to be putting up all of our old stuff strategically sporadically however whatever the plan is but all of our stuff is soon to be on Spotify. And it's just one of those things where it's like we put so much blood, sweat, and tears into all this over the years, and it's not readily available for anybody to listen to. And we've had over the years people reach out that wanted to hear it or heard some of it and wanted to hear more. And so we're just making it available, and we're doing it because we love doing it. And uh, we've actually written a couple of songs. Not, you know, They haven't been completed yet, but... To me, uh, it's good stuff, and um, yeah, I'm excited. I mean, recording quality is way better. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we're getting there, and it's just you know, it's a passion project. Yes, I mean, my biggest thing was, I just wanted. To, I was, I've always been curious as to what Ashling would sound like today. You know, you and I kind of went a certain way in the music that we now listen to and love, and it's gotten different, and our influences are different. I don't know what what Justin's into these days. What Miguel's in like? I just always thought, what would what would we sound like today? Yeah, and that's kind of how it all came started. Yeah. You know, and it's it's sounding pretty good. Yeah. I'm pretty happy so far with the stuff we're doing. Yeah, moving on because I ruined it. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. No, <laughs> it needed to be said. Uh, you want to get into that batch can scram or is there anything else? One thing, two sure. things, real quick. Taproot's back. They just dropped a new album. Oh really? Yeah, fuck How yeah. Is it? I don't know. I haven't heard it yet. I just found out. But you got me into them. Mm-hmm. One of the few things that you've contributed to my life, other than <laughs> stress. <laughs> Another one of those, like they were relatively underground, except for that one video that they did. Yeah, and they're then, a good band. They're yeah, great. they're they're totally new metal. I'm not gonna lie, um, but they're a new metal band that I I did like. Yeah, you're the one who showed me them. Yeah, I had another quick thing. So I have this. Um, I, I, not a tradition, a habit, a ritual at work, right? When I'm on morning shifts, I get to work, I crack open my rain, and I like to read news articles, right? on the Rain energy drinks, everybody. Yes, God's gift. To we were drinks. literally talking, no joke, we were literally talking about, this is the only energy drink that actually gives me energy. Yeah, I'm not, we're not even talking shit. Like, I know we always joke around and like, hey, rain, sponsor us. But, and it, it no bullshit full disclosure i've taken every pre-workout under the fucking sun and i'm talking 450 milligrams of caffeine plus all sorts of other shit something that's supposed to make you feel like you're a fucking monster right and can lift 800 pounds none of them gave me energy not even monster like that yeah not even monster monster sucks exactly and uh, it's a clean high doesn't give you the jitters you don't get like the the crawling feeling on your spine and you're like oh it's fucking go time like no dude it's 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 i don't know what <laughs> what's so different about them but it's amazing. that's the the world's greatest um energy drink and, and i've epi- had i've had them all and this episode is sponsored by rain total body fuel i wish <laughs> <laughs> i've had them all dude i went on the craziest um energy drink kick like four years ago yeah every day i, I would have the nas i'd have red bulls i'd have monsters ghosts you fucking name it i've had every one and that yeah it's god's gift so right. real quick mm-hmm. so that's part of my ritual right i like to read the newspaper mm-hmm. new, news articles and i and i, <laughs> newspaper. I know <laughs> and i found one the other day i was like oh i gotta ask paul this so the title is 
what makes men uncomfortable? Okay, and it gives a list of things, <laughs> and then it gives it gives the percentage of men that these things make comfortable. So I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. okay, being naked in a in a men's changing room, would that make you uncomfortable? Only because I'm probably going to be the least fit in there, and I want to oh, look good. It says who? I didn't say at a gym. You could be a it changing room. It kind of does room because I'm always worried I'm going to get a boner. <laughs> Okay. Well, you are of the 49% of men that say yes. Okay. Crying in front of male friends. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. By far. All right. You're you're part of 48% of men. Damn, yeah. Saying I love you to a male relative. If it's a like heartfelt I love you, that's hard. Yeah. If it's a like a, I love you, bro. I love you, dude. I can Re do that. Male relative. So yeah. even my my little brother says it to me all the time. I'm like, oh, God, get away from me. Thank God, because I thought I was the only one. Fucking that... Jason. All right. <laughs> you haven't said fuck Jason in a long time. Because we haven't said his name, but fuck Jason. So you're of 45% of men. When it comes to to family, mm -hmm. actually, no. You know what? I I think I've said it before. My life's mission is to make guys uncomfortable. Yeah, I know. I love it. Yeah. I tell people I love them all the time. Genuinely mean it. Sometimes. But like when I tell you I love you, it's because I do, right? Yeah. I'm a huge fan of never miss an opportunity because you know you don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. So if I'm gone tomorrow, I've told you I loved you. You yeah. know it. You know right. what I mean? Me and Eric W, Paul's brother, other co-host on uh, Dad Podcaster Dad Show. Podcaster Show. Go check it out. He and I literally every time we talk to one another or text each other, and I have proof. We always tell each other, "All right, man, I love you." He says, "I love you too." Every fucking time, without fail. Yeah. So you, we're a 45. Okay, going to a gay bar. No, no, not at all. I love going to gay bars. Okay. Love it. Well, 44%. Unless, like, there. right now I wouldn't because I feel fat. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like, when I go to gay bars, I get a lot of attention. Dude. And, like, it's not a, like, I'm gay, so, like, I'm going to, like, no. It's just, like, guys don't hesitate to, like, look you up and down and make you feel hot. Yeah. Girls, like, won't even, like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, when I go to gay bar, I'm, I feel so, like, Fuck yeah, man. I'm fucking, I'm good looking. See, you ever seen a, well, you have, because we talk about it all the time. Um, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Yeah, of course. At the end, when little Ronaldo goes, you're just jealous because gay guys like me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, ask my wife. When we go, man, I, I'm like. Well, 44% of men say, says that makes them uncomfortable. Men need a, ugh, whatever. It's because I tell, I tell people all the time, you want to check someone's gaydar, play gay with it. Yeah. And the reason is, I feel maybe I'm wrong. You're uncomfortable because you question yourself. Exactly. A hundred percent. Exactly. Look, I do not feel that in my balls. The at only all. reason I'm uncomfortable right now right. is there might be a little bit of COVID on there. <laughs> <laughs> I tested negative. Thank you. All right. Putting putting sunscreen on a male friend's back. Would that make you uncomfortable? You're on the on the beach having a couple of beers. No. I'm like, not at all. I'm like, you man, hit me, spackle me real Fuck quick. No. Well, I, I, I don't know about you, but nothing with you makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, no, that wouldn't make me feel but uncomfortable. But like, let's say, let's say Dave. Unless I got a hairy back, then I'd What be about a... Dave? Could you spackle up Dave? As long as he doesn't have a hairy back, I could. What about Stevie? I, oh, yeah, for sure. You know, I want to hug Stevie really. Yeah, bad. I love Stevie. Okay. Uh, Shout out, Exiled. Yes. So 42% of men says that makes them uncomfortable. Now, this one I know for sure is a no for the both of us. <laughs> Sharing a bed with a male friend. Oh, no, of course, dude. Oh, dude. <laughs> we, we did it all the time. Yeah. Like, I know. Like close. Yeah. Dude, whatever. You know, who, you know who it did make uncomfortable? Ricky. Did it really? Dude, one time. It's probably because... No, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> one time. And I know we're going off of complete tangents. You should call him and not let him know he's on speaker. On air. Yeah. That's a good idea. One time he had to spend a night at my house for whatever reason. We're in my room and I went to go get something, something to drink or whatever, right? And I came back and he's lying in my bed. So I'm like, oh, this motherfucker wants a spoon. Cool. I said, hey, scoot over. And he goes, nope. So what the fuck are you talking about? He goes, sleep on the floor, way. And I'm like, you're in my house. You sleep on the fucking floor. He tells me, that's rude, way. Have some manners, way. The guest sleeps on the bed. And I said, why can't I sleep with you? Don't even do it, way. Don't. E I'll hit you, way. Don't even think about it. I had to sleep on the floor. Let's call him. Do it. See what he says. If he says something stupid, we can edit it out. 
We're gonna we're gonna change shit up, people. Yeah. Let's see if he answers. I want to put a voice to the kabuzo we. Yeah, exactly. That's why everybody says like, does he really talk like that? Come on, Rick. Fucker ghosted me like three months ago. Still here. No, he's not gonna answer. Hang up. What are you doing, we? <laughs> I'm just here, we. That's selling way. selling parts, we. I'm at work, we. Eating a bologna sandwich, we. Please leave your message. Ah, this mother- I told you. We're going right. to try every episode from here on out <laughs> until he answers. We're going to let you all hear Rick. The, the show. The infamous we, our way. impression of him is not unfounded. Yeah. And for the non-Spanish speakers, way basically means fucker in Spanish. And that's his favorite word. Everything is way. I he, think he used to call my dad way. And it's funny because like my wife says... You never talk like that until you're talking to him. Oh, that's so all she'll of us. sit there and listen to me talk to him on the phone because she gets so like she that's thinks it's hilarious. All of us. <laughs> that guy has a, he's his tone, the way it's wildly contagious. And it's just part of like just how we speak. Yeah. To him. All right, last one. Well, forty-two percent of men say it's uncomfortable to sleep in the same bed with a male friend. That's weird. I know. Wearing pink. I don't. I don't wear pink only. I have worn pink. I don't wear pink only because I don't like the color pink. Yeah. But I but honestly it's not do. an uncomfortable like old oh, no, gay fuck thing, no. right? Yeah, no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't wear pink. But look, we've had the, we've had the fucking t-shirt conversation, so I've kind of I don't want to beat a dead horse. But another thing for people who don't know, I am a sweater. I fucking sweat beyond belief. That's a t-shirt, not a sweater. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I sweat beyond, I just started sweating, saying the word sweat. So colors and I don't really work because you will see the patches of sweat. Yeah. It's probably gross, right? I don't stink, But that's because you're buff. I've always sweat. But you also wear tight shirts. You're buff. It's right there, so it's going to come through. If you wear loose shirts like I do. No, you'll still see it. And I'm the opposite, half and half. I don't sweat for shit. I know. You get like a little glisten. Like a little bead. A bead. Yeah. (laughs) All right, and moving on. All right, that's how I know I'm really actually working out. I'm like, damn, look at it. It's a bead of sweat. I'm really fucking into this. <laughs> all right, let's get into that uh, that batch can scram. Do it. You want to go first? I'll go me? first. Okay. I actually sent you, and I never got a response back from you because I heard these guys, and I was just like, this is amazing. They're really fucking good. And I don't know the singer's name. I didn't research it, but I'm going to shout out the band itself. It's called Love Is Noise. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I told you they were kind of like a weird, interesting mix of different artists. I yeah. can't remember what I said because it's been so long. You said Deftones and... They're kind of electronic, yeah. kind of, I don't know. But dude... Yeah, they were really good. Yeah, Love is Noise. That's yeah. my Batch Can Scram, whatever his name is. We'll figure it out. Yeah. I went with... Uh, we've had the privilege of playing with this band. So mine isn't a Batch Can Scram, it's a Batch Can Sing this dude has an amazing, an amazing voice, an amazing range. His rasp, I don't know. I just, I just, his voice gives me chills. So I chose for my batch who can sing, uh, Eric Victoriano from Strata. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, we got to play with them. Yeah, but, yeah. I haven't heard those guys. Are, are they back together? No, I don't think so. Oh, I haven't heard them in a long time. Yeah, I know, I, I know some people that we're friends with like became really big fans of theirs yeah i never i mean i liked them but i never really i don't know i didn't give them enough pay enough attention to them but yeah. they, they were good yeah they have this song called we've changed fucking incredible you've changed you fucking changed what are you talking about so um do you have anything on you know what really chaps your ass i don't i can't i can't let negativity bog me down man i can't no nope. even though you you almost died well, I mean, getting sick sucks, yeah, but what can you do, right? So my, you know, what really chaps my ass comes from the concert that I spoke about, Guy Fawnes. Mm-hmm. Dude, body odors and bad breath. Oh, yeah. I just felt like I was in this cloud of stench. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And it's like that any, where you, like people, I don't think people are are aware of their own body odors. Whether it be like their breath yeah. or 
they're fucking they forgot to put deodorant on i don't know i find it dude like and it wasn't even just there it's even just walking past people it's like right do you not realize how bad you and do you not have a partner that tells you dude you smell not even a partner how the fuck were you raised my dad and my mom the lord has blessed me with four amazing parents so the who the lord both my dads both my moms always taught us to shower deodorant's fucking important Brush both of his fuck- dads he has gay fathers and <laughs> lesbian moms i wish um yeah hygiene has always been huge on on both sides of my family both my dads both my moms everybody's like a, i'm a huge cologne person because that's how i grew up like you don't leave the house fucking all tirada and stinking at all you know what i mean like deodorant's fucking second nature oh yeah brushing your teeth a million times a day yes. second nature so how people can leave the house I, I don't get it like i'm i'm so to the point where i cannot let's say we're doing shit all day right we go to lowe's this that and the other but we have plans at night i cannot stew in that same funk mm-hmm. all day right i need to shower again before we do the night plans and change you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't wear one shirt all fucking day long. Right. I can't. I have to, like, I have to change. Um, I feel like, what was I going to say? I forgot. Dude, I just had a total fucking brain fart. <laughs> um, I feel like people, how can I say it? Um, I guess I also need to say it in a way that's not going to offend anybody. Uh, Girls smell worse than guys sometimes if they're not aware of it. Did you know that statistically speaking, <laughs> you're more likely to die on the way to the airport? No, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, statistically speaking, they say that women's odor is uh, stronger than a male's, which is why their deodorants are actually stronger. I don't know how true this is, but this is what I've heard. This is what I've read. And so I actually, I use women's deodorant. Some people think it's fucking weird. I think it's fucking like, how do you not? Because anytime I've ever used a man's deodorant, in two hours it wears off women's deodorant for me like lasts all day and i feel fresh you do smell baby powder fresh yeah all dude, the time always I, I i just i don't see it any other way i can't be honest with you on topic off topic i've never met a smelly girl i don't i don't know one girl that smells bad that jason I've ever oh fuck jason <laughs> of course that guy smells actually he doesn't jason well I, I, never I don't think i really have either but they say even my wife has told me this and i've actually read it before too that they say that women have stronger odors than men if they were to if they didn't let that go right right exactly like i've never i can't name one girl that i know that smells bad but or that i've it, ever encountered. it goes to my point as to the what i've heard is that that's why like women's deodorant is stronger than men's mm-hmm. and that's why i choose to use women's deodorant yeah I mean, I use men's because of the antiperspirant, right? I can't, I got to try to contain this way. I, 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 I'm going to start wearing women's underwear too. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. that, that I can't that wait help. for. But uh, anyways, yeah. So that that's what really chaps my ass though. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. no, I give you that. When we went to, I forgot. And I think this is where I got it from. My kid and I went to go see Joyce Manor. Two, oh, did you really? Two weeks ago. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I told you that. I didn't know that's who you went to see. I knew you went to a show. I didn't know it was Joyce Manor. Yeah, they're fucking amazing. Yeah. Anyway, it was a small, small club. He wanted me in the middle with him. And the whole time, fucking, I could feel people's body heat, smell. Their, oh, man. I was like. That's probably where you got COVID, no? A hundred percent. That's Ugh. the only place I went that week. Because nobody at work is sick. And if you're sick, people, don't fucking go out. Don't yeah. go out. Yeah. All right. Um, so one of the reasons I had a brain fart is because I looked at my list and I realized that my let it riff is blank. I didn't come up with a let it riff. Dude, so. half and half. Neither did I. <laughs> well, that's a whole. We are a whole. So let's skip oh, no, let, it, let it Oh, I'm sorry. I do, I do have a let it riff. I don't. Yeah. Um, you want me to give you mine real quick? Sure. I went with uh, Stone Temple Pilots Plush off of the 1992 album Core. Love that fucking dun dun. You challenged me with them, right? Stone Temple Pilots? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I thought you said Lush. I thought no, I was like, Stone what? Stone Temple Pilots Plush. Oh, all I heard was Lush. Yeah. It's an ADHD thing. Did you know that? I barely learned that. Is it? The ADHD 
sometimes you only hear like the end of the sentence. Dude, that that uh, meme that Eric sent to the dad bot. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, it's totally true, man. Um, okay. Yeah, dude, Stone Temple, Stone Temple Pilots was a very good band. Yeah. Um, they were one of the only bands in that genre, them and Soundgarden, that I actually liked at the time. I, again, yeah. I was a, totally against Pearl Jam, which we need to get into that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Fuck, we're running out of time. Let's keep moving on. Um, let's get into the... Let's skip, you know, it blows my thong off, and let's get into the chat. Do you have somebody for the chat? I, uh, uh, yeah, I do. And today on the chat, I went with um, an artist I've been listening to for a few years now. He's dropped a couple... I don't know, he kind of fell off the face of the earth. But recently, within the past two months, I want to say he's a couple of singles have come out. Anyway, if you're into like dream pop, shoegazy type, alternative type, um, type of music, I chose for the chat, um, Drab Majesty. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fucking amazing. I love Drab Majesty. If you like the cure, that kind of type stuff, Drab Majesty is for you. Hmm. Drab Majesty. I mean, I'm trying to add that into my Spotify. Mm-hmm. Is it one word? Two, no, two words? words. Drab. Oh, it's the first one that comes up. They've got... Damn, they got a lot of followers. They did not look the way I imagined. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you for the chat. Let's get into... Uh, do you have anything for Guess This Riff? I do. Do you? Yeah, I do. Okay, go first. Mine's going to be really easy. Go. Dun 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 Slayer. Slayer, Raining Blood. One of the best, most iconic riffs of all time. Such a good riff, man. I'm honestly shocked you have yet to challenge me with that band. I am like that was one of the bands I knew was fucking coming. Slayer? I don't even know her. All right, go for it. Okay, ready? Uh, guess this riff, ready? Oh, shit. Dude, it's on the tip of my tongue, I guess you could say that. Is it Red Hot Chili Peppers? No? Yeah. Which one? Scar tissue. Scar tissue and that. What did he say? That I wish you saw. That I wish you saw. You forever ruined Californication for me. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> In the 90s when that album came out, I overplayed that CD beyond belief. But on the song Californication, if you guys know, he said, Dream of Californication. Oh, whoa, whoa. We were at Paul's house one time and he was like, dude, I think he should go, whoa, whoa, whoa after after that party's like that that's missing that would have made it better and i was like what are you talking about so every time we listen to that song you hit me with a whoa whoa <laughs> the past two times i fucking seen them live that song came on and i would go whoa whoa <laughs> <laughs> have to man let's get into our challenge results do it so yours is pretty lengthy right you better believe it is right, i haven't me- seen you in two weeks <laughs> All right, Pearl Jam versus Motley Crue. You want me to go first? Yes, you go first. So, again, I told you, I've, I'm f- more familiar with uh, Motley Crue than you would think, mm-hmm. right? Because, again, I love any um, documentaries and stories and all that stuff on, on virtually any band, and they have a lot. Yeah. So I've I've always watched their shit, and with that comes along with listening to their music, right? Because it's always a part of the documentary. So um, I'm going to say, uh, let me start off by saying out of all the 80s butt rock bands, they are for sure the best ones. Above Rat, above Poison, that whole fucking movement. To me, they were at the forefront, right? Right. And they're the best ones out of, out of all of them. So again, I mean, I, I do like Motley Crue. There's nothing that uh, I don't like about them. They're very much 80s. Um, nothing shocking, you know, throughout their whole discography other than when they hit, I think their self-titled track was, I mean, their self-titled album was like 90, 91. It's called Motley Crue. Mm -hmm. That one you can, you know, kind of tell they were trying, but all their albums sound the same. Like it's, they're all very much Motley Crue albums. Oh, okay. I will say that Shout Out the Devil is their best album. Yes. It's the heaviest one. 
Um, <clears throat> this challenge also made me realize that I like 80 ballads, 80s ballads more than I thought. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Livewire and Public Enemy on Too Fast for Love. Those too are, fast, too fast for love. Those are great out, uh, great songs. Um, Shout Out the Devil. Okay, so on Shout Out the Devil, there's a song called God Bless the Children, right? Mm -hmm. And that song is very, very Metallica. Really? Now, I'm going to say, so... I've never heard of that before. So because I've I you know I've seen a lot of Metallica um, documentaries and I like Metallica. They always talk shit about hair metal bands when they were coming up. It yeah. was like you know, thrash versus the yeah. Hair metal. Fuck those guys. But Molly Crew came out before Metallica. Okay. Did they? Yeah. Ninety one. Eighty one was their first album. Oh, okay. Now Metallica was eighty three. Right when Shout at the Devil came well, out. Well, that was when Kill 'Em All came out. But I think Metallica still was already together before that. But I'll give that. I'll give you that. But. Motley yeah. Crue was famous before. Is what right, I'm saying. right. Now, these are probably fighting words. <laughs> There's a lot of similarities, dude. A lot. Metallica is like the darker, heavier version of Motley Crue to an extent. But no, dude. Metallica was very thrashy at that time. There was Simi no thrash in Motley Sim Crue. Similarities in, in, in licks and riffs. Not entirely, right? I mean, obviously, Vince Neil does not sound like James Hetfield. You cannot compare Tommy Lee to, to fucking Lars. But there's something, for me, my ears anyway, you know, different ears hear different things, just like different eyes see different things. There's some Metallica in there. That song, God Bless the Children, could have easily gone into a Metallica song. But a newer Metallica song. No. Well, okay. Black album and after. Yes, that's yes. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So, but at that time, Metallica sounded nothing like that. I'm not. I'm not saying they sounded. There was just. I see what you're saying. Like small, future state Metallica. Yeah, small similarities. Right? Okay. Um. Uh, let's go back to songs. Don't go away, mad. That's a good song. It's talk off of Doctor Feelgood. Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, I can see where. So come come the '90s, right? They still kept trying to truck on right they had like two or three albums in the 90s one of them was that generation swine i mm -hmm. think is what it was called mm -hmm. when i started listening to that album I'm like all oh, right it's a little on the heavier side it seems a little darker it seems like a little a little riffier right like they were trying to be in that time right mm -hmm. that 90s time but vince neal is just he's what takes you back to the 80s sound big right, time you right. know what i mean he has such a distinct voice though <clears throat> yeah and that's what i'm saying out of, out of all the hair metal bands they're the best ones I will say, and again, I, I said this on, on my Metallica challenge. The type of metal and heavy music that I'm used to, the drums are such a big part, right? Like I, my ear always gravita gravitates towards an amazing drummer, right? right? And the skill. And, and I, because of the, the drummers I love, I don't hear the big deal in Lars, right? He's a great drummer, but I, in my mind, I know better drummers, right? Right even though Lars influenced probably right, that's what I was gonna say. ninety percent of the drummers I love. Right. You know, but um same thing goes for Tommy Lee though, man. Like put your stand sideways. Like I have it. Because then otherwise people are only seeing the the tip. That's all you need is the fucking tip, dude. What are you talking about? All right, sorry. So and same thing. A lot of people have always <clears throat> blew up uh tommy lee right like he's supposed to be oh. this fucking amazing drummer and i'm with like, tommy lee it's literally the persona right right because i'm diving deep and i'm listening yeah. and i'm like i, I don't get it you right know what i mean right like he does do like this this galloping type like nah, 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 thing that yeah it's cool right but i still don't see the big deal on tommy lee overall i liked it i knew i would I'm not in love with it. I'm not going to go back and listen to Motley Crue over and over. You know what I mean? But you'll hear a song and jam well, out here and there. I've always have, though. You know, girls, like... Girls, girls, girls. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like all their hits. You know the what I mean? The thing about Motley Crue is they were able to blend. Like, to me, I see... This is where I personally see Motley Crue as one of the first bands to blend melody into metal. <clears throat> yeah, I can see that. Because their yeah. songs are catchy as fuck, but they still got that metal guitar. Yeah. Mick Mars, me growing up wanting to be a musician as a kid, I would hear his riffs and I would just like, 
chills yeah like you know what i mean like dang that's how does how does somebody make a guitar sound like that yeah so that was the appeal and then like vince neal's voice wasn't the greatest voice but he knew how to write catchy ass melodies right it's stuck in your head yeah. you know but uh cool yeah they're a great band yeah they're a great band you hear that Plus, they got like the they they are the true epitome of what it is to be a rock star, or, oh, or uh, I should say, what it was to be what a rock it was, star. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think that appeal is just a, a part of their draw. Right. You know, I was fortunate to see them, the original members, live uh, with Mick Mars. Live, they sounded okay, decent wait a, show. Wait, wait a minute, they lost Mick Mars. Yeah, they have that Johnny Five guy or whatever is now. Oh, that's recently. Yeah, like, yeah. The whole career up until the big argument oh, for that a, they're for having. a little while, they had a falling out, and they had somebody, and then they also had a drummer fill in at another point, and it was it's really? always been yeah, oh yeah. Balga, man, dude. Yeah, they had a female drummer at one point. Um, huh. But yeah, so you know, I, that was kind of like a bucket list thing for me. The weird thing is, as much as I loved Motley Crue. As a kid, mm -hmm. they played no, they had no influence on me on how I write music. Zero. Yeah. Which is really weird. I don't know. Yeah. I guess it's because when I actually started playing, I didn't, wasn't learning their stuff. Yeah. But I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. All right. Let's get into the, <laughs> what is it? Pearl Jam. What did I say it was? It, Pearl Jam is another way of saying jizz. Yeah. I, 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 st I stand by that. <laughs> I really think that's what it, it means. Okay. okay? go this was a weird one for me man because right out the gate i put it on first of all let me say their discography is so fucking extensive i had no idea well didn't, didn't i tell you you didn't have to listen to all i still i felt like i had to like just try to do justice to it dude i cannot believe how much material these guys have written yeah and the weird thing is i don't know any of their names but anyways uh, except for the singer. I don't know his name, but if I hear it, I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's his name. Eddie Vedder. Eddie Vedder. There you go. Uh, Stone Gossard. I got to tell you, like... Jeff Amit. I, I wrote here. I put, okay, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Said, I love the music of the first song. And this is where it gets really creepy. The first song off of 10? The very first album. Okay. I put... Uh, the first song off of 10? Yeah. Okay. I think is it 10 is that what it's called yeah and the voice isn't so bad but here's why the voice wasn't so bad it was like it became oddly familiar mm -hmm. i've heard them in passing for so fucking long mm -hmm. that all of a sudden it wasn't like it, it wasn't new to me it wasn't like a cringe anymore it was like the way i wrote it down here it was almost like comfort food yeah you know, isn't that fucking weird? No, not at all, dude. And I just kept asking myself, why am I now liking these songs? Thank you. Half the time that I give you anything from your your devil days, I now I know for a fact New Paul can go back and appreciate RuPaul. Some of, oh, Ru New Paul. <laughs> RuPaul. <laughs> That's your Halloween costume. <laughs> you know what I mean though? Like back then you were you know, straight up devil worshiper, like you, the heavier, the better, right? So of course you didn't appreciate it, but you're not the same person. True. Now. True. You know what I mean? So, you know, I just kept asking myself, like, why am I liking this? I was listening to it. The quality was great. His vocals weren't irritating. I was not cringing at all. Matter of fact, I actually enjoyed some of the songs that I was familiar with. I actually like, was like, this is, this is a good song. Yeah. Like, why? What? What is... What is wrong with me? Why do I feel the need to go put on one of my flannel shirts right now? You Doc Martens. <laughs> <laughs> Album two, um, I like I like the music, and I again going down listening. All I kept thinking about is how all these songs were giving me a very nostalgic feeling. Yeah. Uh, but it was just so weird because it's like I was f I'm familiar with these songs, but not at the same time. But my it was like making these weird connections in my brain that. I was like, I, I, I like this, okay? Uh, I put that his voice isn't the greatest, but somehow it was very, very tolerable. Um, I like the song Dissident. Mm -hmm. 
Are you familiar with that one? Yes. I said, I really remembered it. And for some reason it just stood out. And I was like, this is a good fucking song. I was in a weird, weird world when I was listening to this stuff. Cause it was not at all what I was expecting. <laughs> I knew it. I fucking knew I it. Feel it. Oh no, I don't even know. I can't even do it. <laughs> I can't even do it. I don't even have a deep enough voice to do it. Do an imitation of Eddie. Vedder. <laughs> You're asking me. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Come on. Now when you put me on the spot, I can't. Oh, my God. Adrian. She scratches a letter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Tony does it really good. Uh, f- Tony. Hey, whoa. It's only fuck Jason. Tony is part of why I had to listen to Pearl Jam. <laughs> yeah, he is. Tony! Okay. Uh, Vitalogy. I already, I'm already there. Um, I put not bad, but not good either. Same as before, I can tolerate the music. So now let me let me let me go to that. I can tell you, like in like honest to God, every song musically mm. was really good. Yes. Like if you took out his vocal, again, you know, like I said, his voice I tolerated. I was like, it's not so bad. I actually found an appreciation for his voice. Mm. But dude, like you take out his vocal and just just listening to the music itself. It's really fucking good music. Yes. It's very, and, and I think I read it later on. Um, I don't know. I just, I really, I really like the music a yeah. lot. Um, but again, it goes back to the original. What I said is like, it's it's always been his voice that I struggled to get past, right? So the songs I was familiar with, I was like, yeah, I like this. Songs not that I wasn't very familiar with, I like the music. The vocals kind of struggled. I struggled with the vocals for a little bit. Uh, then I got into the album No Code started off good uh started off really good and then i put here this is when i realized and it kind of clicked that the music had a a jane's addiction feel to it really i really felt like a jane's vibe especially like they were doing like some like percussive stuff and it was kind of like uppity which is funny because you hate uppity but it was very uppity and uh i was like dude you could put perry farrell from jane's addiction's voice on this and um it would be jane's addiction like it was just very much along those lines uh one thing i did not like and i know it was on more than one song is i put uh whenever he does his harmonica shit i've just never been a Mm. fan of harmonicas in music it's the same as like sometimes i struggle when anybody puts like an organ i just organs and harmonicas i just don't like and he does this harmonica thing on a regular basis and um you know, I still struggled with his voice, but it's not, it wasn't a cringe anymore. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like some of the bands you've challenged me with where I was literally cringing. Like, uh, like it wasn't a cringe. It was just like, uh, like it's not bad. It's not good. If I was the producer, I would may have been a little bit more picky about what he was doing. But at the same time, again, that's what I guess people love, right? People have learned to love and people like him for that. Um, I noticed there was little hints in his voice that I feel like perhaps influenced like Jonathan Davis from Corn. He did like a couple of things that I was like, "Where? who does that? And then I was like, oh, that's like a Jonathan Davis thing. So weird. Never made that connection before. Um, at Towards the end. Oh, okay. I put uh, still struggle with his voice. Okay. Uh, more of a. Oh, yeah. So more of a quote, couldn't it be better somehow? So again, going back to the producer side of me of like, like, okay, like you did what you did vocally, but like, could can we think, of, as a producer, I would have been like, can we think of something better to do? Yeah. Is there some sort of like melody? Could you like do it again, but not off key? Because he was off key a lot. Um, And so I started after that album, after No Code, which is where, where did you tell me to go up to? I stopped at bi- binaural. Oh, okay. Well, I started to kind of just really starting to run through the albums after that because it, I just felt like it, a lot of it was kind of uh, a lot of the same stuff, kind of a lot of the same feeling. Yeah. So instead yeah. of having to like say the same thing over and over for every single album, <sighs> overall, final thoughts, I kind of like Pearl Jam now. <laughs> I knew it. But I'm very partial to the stuff that I'm already familiar with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Dude, 10 is their best fucking album, hands down. The I re- like 9 too. Well, I, I was partial <laughs> to 8 until I heard 10. 
Uh, Fun fact: the album Ten. Uh huh. They they were or are big basketball fans. Oh really? And there was a basketball player back in the day named Mookie Blaylock, and his number was ten. That's why they called the album Ten. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, man. I mean, music is great. Yeah. Production is fantastic from beginning to end. Uh, vocals don't quite make me cringe. Not my go-to. Not something that I can say like. I can't sit here and tell you Eddie Vedder's a great singer still, but I do have an appreciation for them. I do really give them credit for what they've done because, again, one thing I can say, one thing I can say, final thought, to take away, walking away from this, there's only one Pearl Jam. Yeah. Like, yes. nobody sounds like them. There might be, like I said, the Jonathan Davis connection. Like, there might be some people that have been influenced by them, but Pearl Jam is Pearl Jam. And that is fucking hard to do. And so I give them all the credit in the world. The only thing I will say that I love Eddie Vedder's voice, right? I, I think he's got an amazing voice. But he spawned a movement on this one time I was watching this documentary and this guy this, shirts. this guy referred it referred to his style as a Yarl. Yarl, you know what I mean? So you listen to Scott Creed. S- Scott Sapp from Creed and that like late nineties to early two thousands brand of rock. There's a lot of little Eddie Vedders in there. A lot. Yeah, I could see that. You know what I mean? For sure. Uh again, you know, back then definitely was not my cup of tea. Um But I I knew it. I knew You knew what? See what? <laughs> I fucking knew that was going to fucking happen. You appreciate music differently. I even I even venture to say that if I gave you this band 12 years ago, you'd it'd be the same outcome because I don't nin- think so. 90s 90s Paul was the heavier the better. Fuck grunge, slayer, you know what I mean? It, Bless you. I never sneezed on the podcast before. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um yeah, I, guess, I don't know. Maybe I might go back and listen to those. The early stuff was really good. I, yeah. I think I'll go back and listen to that. Yeah, awesome. They have so much music though. It actually made me do a make me think a little bit. I used to think that the more music a band has, the better. <clears throat> now seeing how much music they have, actually, I kind of feel like it's too much music. To I feel point, like it's yeah. way too much music. Yeah. So now I don't know. I, I have to rethink that idea yeah but anyways yeah overall glad you challenged them to me awesome you want to get into our next challenge yes you want to go first you want me to go first i want you to go first it's about time you never let me go first you always finish way before i do (laughs) (laughs) so um a uh, a genre of music that i've loved for a very long time thanks to my twin brother gussie gussie's a big old 50s kid he He's a greaser at heart. He dresses like a greaser to this very day. The big cuffs, pompadour, biker boots, all that shit. He was doing that style when <clears throat> nobody was doing nobody it. Nobody, since the early 90s. He looks the exact same, but yeah. he's, he's buff. Um, so he's a big old rockabilly kid, what they call rockabilly. But throughout the way, rockabilly, which is that, that, that country type of sound, right? The Elvis-esque type of sound throughout the years has had has evolved right a lot of metal, metal musicians and punk musicians got into that style of music and the genre was born that they call psychobilly mm-hmm. which is like punk rockabilly type music you know they use upright basses and just has that whole vibe i did some work with a band like that once who i don't want to admit, i don't want to say <laughs> do i know the guy yeah oh okay i know who you're talking about then um so anyway, out of this whole movement, um, you know, my brother would always show me all these bands, and one of my favorite bands from the rockabilly scene, um, I've loved forever. To me, they have not one fucking dud. So today, I'm going to challenge you with psychobilly band Tiger Army. Oh wow, that's interesting because everybody's our friends, our group of friends, everybody I've always known have been obsessed with that band they're fucking amazing and i've never i've listened to a song or two and i'm like okay like i've never gotten into them yeah so i'm actually i'm actually excited to do that you, you're gonna get to a certain point where you're gonna hear everything just shift nick 13 has one of the he's got a voice of a fucking angel 
And you're going to... You're... Cross between Fergie and Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Out really? of, I mean, there's a shit ton of bands from that genre. Is that it stand-up bass and all that stuff? Yeah, all of it. Hmm. I love the horror pops. I love Madsen. Like, there's... Psycho Billy's a fucking beautiful genre, but they stuck out the fucking most. Yeah. First of all, I didn't know they were Psycho Billy. I always thought they were just like punk. And I haven't heard them for a long, that name in a long time. They used to come to a local place oh, all yeah. the time. Yeah. And I remember all of our friends were always like, oh, Tiger Army's coming. I was like, and? Like, I never. <laughs> so I'm, I'm interested. I'm curious. Yeah. Do they have a lot of albums? Uh, Not Pearl Jam a lot, but yeah. Oh, thank they, God. They, they got a good yeah. amount. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> all right, cool. I'm looking forward to that one. I will tell you right now, my favorite album. Just that way when you when you get there. Oh fuck, I don't think I can tell you. I think music from Regions Beyond and Ghost Tigers Rise are probably my two favorite albums. Okay. No, and all they have is one, two, three, four, five, six albums. It's still a lot, but yeah. All right, cool. All right. I'm gonna challenge you with a band that we're gonna go back. We're gonna go way back. Oh, gross. More further back than the Beatles? Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> not that far. <laughs> this band was huge. This is the band, and by me saying this, you're probably already gonna know who it is. This is the band that got me into metal music. Winger? <laughs> Winger? I don't even know her. <laughs> um, when I hear this band's songs to these days, to this day. I like get this special warm feeling just because I remember being a kid and first time hearing these these songs and that, that feeling that you do anything to bone her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, gotcha. exactly. And uh, dude, like their songs are just genuinely good. Uh, the guitar player is one of the, like God's gifts to guitarists. And uh, I do you find yourself before i say it do you find yourself when you challenge me with somebody do you find yourself going back and listening to them because you know that i'm listening to them because that's what i do what 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 are you talking like about? if i challenge like i challenged you with uh motley crew i didn't this time though but i challenged you with motley crew oh do i I'll, go back to my challenge yeah so theme. i can kind of like some foreshadow what you might say sometimes like with pearl jam no because i'm familiar with pearl jam, yeah right yeah. but some of them yeah okay um, so it kind of makes me want to go and listen to this band's discography. But anyways, I'm going to challenge you with Scorpions. Ew. No, dude. <laughs> you need to appreciate these guys. First of all, they're not from shit. the you U.S. You need to stop telling me what I they're need to do. They're not from the U.S. Yeah, that I know. I, I, I know the story. I've, I've seen behind dude, the music. Dude, Eric, video. my brother, has he found a uh, Michael Schenker, who's a guitar player, guitar. I think it's a Dean guitar. Dude, one of the best sounding guitars I've ever played in my life. It's a Flying V. Really? Yeah. Anyways, that guy, Michael Schenker, Ruda, uh, I, I used to know all their names. They have um, uh, Klaus Mean is the singer. Man, that guy has a set of pipes on him. And he can sing really well. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for something like that. <laughs> Dude, no, seriously. Listen to his melodies. Yeah. Listen to his vocal capabilities. Yeah. Listen to... What made me think to challenge you here is that going back to what we said about Motley Crue having these great hooks and these great uh, melody, uh, Scorpions just equally as good. Sometimes, honestly, maybe just as good, if not better, and in certain times. Especially, you just said, and I wanted to say it when you said it, but I didn't say it when you said about the ballads. Yeah, dude, they have some of the greatest fucking yeah. ballads. No, I'm familiar with them. I, I jokingly say ew, but no, I'm familiar with Scorpions. Dude. Not. To your extent, right? But right. No, yeah, I've, I know all the hits, basically. They are. I'll even go if you if you end up liking them, you should watch a documentary. Since you're a documentary guy, it's called "To Russia with Love." Oh wow, really? Yeah, I used to watch it a lot when I was a kid. Um, they really are the reason that I got into the music, but also, <clears throat> I credit them with like a big part of my drive to become a musician, and like live that life. You know, life way that life way, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So scorpions versus tiger army, tiger army. Yeah, are they are they around still? Yeah, Did I ask you that. They yeah. are. Uh -huh. mm. Last okay. album was twenty nineteen, somewhere around there. 
Yeah. So this was a little scattered episode, but that's okay. You know what? We had a lot to catch up on. Yes. Um, I'm sorry we, we skipped a couple of our usual segments. Hopefully you guys are okay with that. Uh, but, you know, when my bay gets sick, you know, there's we, we lose... We, we lose a lot of time, and there's a lot of we got to catch up on. Yes, and then um, get hyped for the month of October. we got a lot of cool yes. shit coming up. It's our favorite time of year. It's our favorite month. Um, yeah, cool shit to come. Our, our videos or the video portion of our podcast is about to get a cool new backdrop. To hit off uh, our first episode, you know, we were all about, like, horror and scary. Yeah. You know, so I've decided that... If I'm going to be really, truly scary and, like, make the audience be like, what the fuck? I'm going to do that episode with my shirt off. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're going to scare them because I'm going to fucking rape you <laughs> on camera. <laughs> yeah, October's going to be cool. Oh. We, got some, we got some cool stuff planned. Of course, um, the infamous Ward ghost stories because the Adianos don't fuck with that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, um, we have stuff that we can talk about, but... And then we're also going to actually have a Halloween one uh, episode, our last one, where we're actually going to wear our costumes. Should I have spoiled that? <laughs> no, I just totally forgot we were going to oh do that. Oh, my God. Uh, but, yeah, anything else? Nope. That's good. Awesome. Thank you guys so Th- much for listening. If you're listening, awesome. You can watch this. It should be on YouTube. Maybe not today, uh, but it will be always. We have the video follow the audio mm-hmm. a few days later. So be on the lookout for that. Just a couple of quick plugs. Don't forget to check out our boys, Dave and Stevie, Exile Link. Don't forget to check out our other podcast, The Dave, The Dave, <laughs> The Dad Podcasters. <laughs> the Dave Podcast Show. <laughs> the Dad Podcaster Show. Check out Nevermore Records on YouTube. Check out Plastic Realm Toys on YouTube. Yeah, all that good stuff. Follow us and uh, yeah. Oh, and then go go listen to Ashling on Spotify. Yeah, A-I-S-L-I-N-G. Do that. Tell us, give us some feedback on that. Do yeah, you like it? Yeah. Does it suck? I don't know. I yeah. don't even know anymore. Yeah. All right. Give me a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Till next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.